Thank you, Chairman Tonko. I wanted to uh, ask some questions about the plastic waste crisis, because I do think it's a crisis. And maybe what I'll do is just ask each, each of you to answer yes or no to this first question of going down the line. Do you believe that we can effectively address our plastic waste crisis without reducing the amount of plastic we produce in the first place? Just yes or no, starting with Ms. Jambeck. No? No. Okay. Mr. Zald Zaldivar? It's possible. Okay. It, it's possible. All right. Ms. Hoffman? No, I don't. Okay. And then Ms. Patel? No, I don't. And Mr. Chrisman? Yes, absolutely. And Mr. Johnson? Yes, I think it's possible. Okay. I hope um, it is, What did you say, Bill? I hope it is, too. Okay. <laughs> um, I think that addressing the, this plastic waste crisis is going to require efforts to reduce the waste stream, not just recycle it. That's my view. And I think, I think we have to learn from our past experience with recycling and avoid relying again on strategies like exporting contaminated materials, which allowed us to ignore our waste without actually addressing it. And, and again, our patchwork of recycling programs creates confusion for consumers. Uh, the, particularly the move towards single stream recycling has, I think, made it easier for recycling for consumers to recycle, but harder for processors to manage the waste system, uh, especially when unrecyclable materials inadvertently wind up in the recycling bin. So let me go uh, back to uh, Dr. Jambek. How can we improve science and tracking to ensure we're actually addressing the waste we produce. Yeah, so I've seen a few um, programs throughout the world in terms of tracking materials better. Um, some of them include um, RFIE uh, tracking of materials, which we have done here. Um, in some cases, when people get their waste collected at their home, there was a program uh, called Recycle Bank, and that was sort of credited to those people. Um, I think in general, I would love to see um, more collaboration about understanding how much material we're producing and using um, as we do science looking at potential mitigation options for this, it's been hard to get actual quantities of materials that go into certain products and then the use of those products and then the waste stream. We have different metrics, count, mass. So all of those have been a little confounding as we've tried to do science around this issue. Okay. Ms. Hoppin, you referred several times in your testimony to materials that are authentically recyclable. Mm -hmm. And I, I think that term captures the disconnect between what we thought we were recycling in the past and what was just being dumped. Are there any strategies being used or discussed in the recycling arena today that you see as inauthentic? Um, certainly. <laughs> yeah, I think that there's... Um a disconnect that I think you know we can address between the production of materials and the end of life. So I think there's a, a misunderstanding that if you make a, a product out of a technically recyclable material, that that means it will then, in fact, be recycled. But there are so many other factors that need to be considered in terms of its ability to be collected, to be sorted, how it impacts existing infrastructure, how it behaves in the equipment. So, um, for example, we often will get uh, expanded PET um, insulation that goes into kind of meal crates made of, made of PET, number one. It says on there, please recycle, but our PET markets don't want it. It's flat. It ends up in the paper in our process. It's very hard to remove. So I think there's a difference between technically being recyclable and actually getting recycled, and that's where we need manufacturers and producers to be more involved and engaged in the design. All right, thank you. I, I'm only going to, uh, my next question is, what is the most important thing the federal government can do to modernize our outdated recycling system? I don't think I'm going to get a response from more than one. So let me go on the other hand here with Mr. Johnson. What do you think we should do to modernize our recycling system? Well, there's a lot of, <clears throat> excuse me, there's a lot of techno new technologies that are coming onto the market. And so it's, you could, there can be things like business incentives, tax incentives for businesses to, uh, for the recyclers to incorporate those new technologies would be the first one. Also encouraging uh, through other types of incentives for manufacturers to design their products to be recycled, um, to use more recycled content in their products. Um, and that will, uh, th those should be some uh, quick ones to, to help. All right. Uh, my time is up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman.